Welcome to the wonderful world of Super Mario 64 ROM hacking. This tutorial should get you started on using the decompilation of Super Mario 64 in order to create ROM hacks. Now, let me start this off by saying, decomp may not be for you. If you want to make a very basic Super Mario 64 hack with only custom levels and no custom objects or mechanics, I would highly suggest you check out Super Mario 64 ROM Manager or Bowser's Blueprints instead. The link to those tools will be in the description of this video. However, if you want to be able to make Super Mario 64 ROM hacks with lots of custom objects and changes to the core engine, it will be worth it for you to take the time and learn Super Mario 64 DCOM. This video will only cover the actual installation process of Super Mario 64 DCOM, so if you want to learn how to actually make changes to the game using DCOM, be sure to check out the playlist in the description of this video. This tutorial will only cover the step-by-step -step process for Windows computers. The process isn't too different when using Linux or Mac machines, so I'll cover those later. Now, with all that out of the way, the installation tutorial can officially begin. Open the Start Menu search bar and search for Turn Windows Features On or Off. Then, scroll down until you find the Enable Windows Subsystem for Linux tick box. This will prompt you to restart your computer. Once you have restarted your computer, the first step is officially complete. Open the Microsoft Store and search for Ubuntu. Once you find it, download the application. Once the download finishes, open it. When you first open Ubuntu, it will prompt you to enter a username and a password. When you type in your password, nothing will be displayed, not even stars, but rest assured, the application is recording your keyboard inputs. Be sure to memorize these or store them in a safe place as you will need these credentials when doing certain actions in Ubuntu. Once you have configured a user account, you must do one more thing. In the command line, type in sudo apt update. This will make sure your Ubuntu is up to date. Once it finishes that process, type sudo apt upgrade in the command line. It will prompt you and ask you if you want to upgrade everything. Type the letter Y in the command line and then everything will be upgraded. Congratulations, your Ubuntu is ready and step two is officially complete. This step is optional if you already have a code editor that you already use. However, if you don't currently have a code editor installed on your PC, follow this quick and easy step. Go to this link, code.visualstudio.com, and download Visual Studio Code. The setup process is very straightforward, and I have no doubt in my mind that you will have any trouble doing it yourself. Now that we have the virtual machine and a code editor, we can finally clone the repository. Basically, we're finally downloading DCOM. With Ubuntu open, first, set your working directory to wherever you want your DCOM project folder to end up. I would highly recommend using the C folder since you have to type this command every time you want to build. To set the working directory, type in the command cd slash mnt slash c. Press enter and it should say your new working directory. Now paste the command git clone github.com slash n64decom slash sm64.git and then after that you type whatever you want your project name to be. For the sake of this tutorial I will be naming the project well simply tutorial. If you want to paste the command instead of typing it out you can certainly do that all you have to do, after copying some text, is to right-click in the Ubuntu window. Most of the commands I show off in this video will be in the description for you to copy and paste. Once everything has finished downloading, a new folder should have been created in your C directory by the name you had put in the command. With that being said, the fourth step is now officially complete. Ubuntu can't just build a Super Mario 64 ROM out of thin air. Well, I mean, 
It can, but first you have to give the compiler more information so that it knows how to read the source code that you just downloaded. Luckily, this is really simple to do. In Ubuntu, paste the command sudo apt install by entails gips blah 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 blah. Make sure you do this in your default working directory, otherwise you will get an error when you build it in the future. So make sure to run the command cd with no other parameters. Press enter and wait for it to quit spewing text in the console. Once it finishes up, step 5 is now complete. In order for distribution of decomp to be legal, assets such as textures and sound do not come with decomp. Instead, all assets are obtained by the compiler by extracting assets from a ROM that you must provide. So first, you need a Super Mario 64 Z64 ROM. You could easily find a free download on one of those sketchy, uh, I mean, uh, dump the ROM yourself using very expensive equipment. Yeah. <laughs> well, once you have obtained said ROM, one way or another, you need to prepare it for extraction. Remember, the ROM has to have a .z64 extension, otherwise it will not work. First, rename the ROM file itself to baserom.us.z64. If you intend on building the Japanese release of the game instead, rename the ROM to baserom.jp.z64 instead, and make sure the ROM itself is the Japanese version of the game. Now, drag the ROM you just renamed into the decomp folder you just cloned. Step 6 is now officially complete. You're finally here! This is the exciting part, the part where you finally get to build the ROM. First, set your working directory to your decomp folder. In our case, we type cd slash mnt slash c slash tutorial. And at last, type in the command make minus j and the amount of cores that are in your computer's CPU. In my case, the CPU on my computer has six cores, therefore I will type make minus j6 for the maximum speed. If your Ubuntu window looks like this, that means you have officially succeeded in building the ROM. I promised I would go over the installation on Mac and Linux machines. Fortunately, the steps aren't all too different from the rest of the tutorial. If you're on a Mac device, you will, unfortunately, have to run Windows on a virtual machine and then do all the steps in this video. However, if you're on a Linux computer, you can actually skip some steps. Since you are already on a Linux system, you don't have to do steps 1 and 2 which involve using Ubuntu on Windows. Before we continue to the end of the tutorial, let's talk about decomp updates. Whenever the decomp team wants to update decomp to be more readable or have more accessible features, they will push something called a refresh. This does not change the output ROM, but rather makes it easier to read code or give access to more N64 development features. Whenever you work on a hack, Keep in mind what refresh you installed decomp on. Some tools will require newer refreshes or require you to input what number of refresh you are on. In the case of this tutorial, this installation was on refresh 13. Now that you may or may not have officially installed decomp, let me give you some more information as well as resources to help you take your next steps. Every part of this video has been timestamped so that you may rewatch any step easily in the case that you make a mistake. If you have any questions or need help, you can join any of these Discord communities linked down in the description of this video. You can also visit the romhacking.com forums to ask questions, show off your work, and find even more helpful resources. A large portion of decomp requires knowledge of the C coding language so it would be very helpful to glance and skim at this link to learn a bit more about C if you don't already know how to use it. If there was a part of this video you could not hear or understand, the full script for the tutorial will be in the description. Finally, subscribe to this channel to get notified of new decomp tutorials.